Good morning all you fishing ninjas out there. Today is going to be a really awesome day. You know why? Because I'm going to fish with Mike Iconelli. There's only two small problems though. First, I did not bring any fishing gear. And second, Mike does not know I'm coming. Used to spend my nights out in the bar room. Let go, that's the only love I know. But you rescued me from reaching for the bottom and brought me back. sitting right in there having breakfast. I really don't know how to uh, approach him, but I guess the best thing to do is that old element of surprise. Hey, Mike, 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 stop, stop, stop. Oh man, I'm sorry, I'm late. Who are you? Uh, just give me a second. Can I put my bags here? Uh, I, I guess. Nice car, by the way. Thank you. Oh, oh man, this was one hectic morning. We're filming this? Yeah. What's this for? Who are you? What uh, are we doing? Didn't Becky tell you? No. She did not? No! Oh, she must have missed it. It's so, so typical. I'm Robert, I'm from Sweden. How are you? I won a competition to go fish with you. You did? Yeah. Oh, it makes sense now, okay. Yeah, it does. So, did you sleep well? I slept good. You did? I slept good. Awesome. Do you snore? I don't snore, I sleep like a log. Are you sure? Uh -huh. I might snore. Because, not that I'm stalking you or anything yeah. like that, but I think when I accidentally passed by your door last night, yeah. I heard like a <laughs> voice. <laughs> maybe I was just cutting firewood in there. Yeah, maybe. So where are we going? We're uh we're fishing on the Potomac River. Let me let me not let me let me restate that. We're looking on the Potomac River. Okay. We're on a scouting trip, practicing for a big tournament that's gonna to be here in about a month. What tournament? This is the uh, BASS Elite event on the Potomac River. It's okay. the seventh stop of the year. The seventh stop of the year. Seventh stop of the year. I'm sitting in ninth in points. Yeah. Having a good year, so. That's a good year. Really good year. So a couple more good tournaments and I could win Angler of the Year. Yeah. And we'll see you in, in uh, Classics. Definitely, hopefully, in the Bassmaster Classic. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. What's your view on uh, adoption? Adoption? Yeah. I love adoption. You do? Why? You want to be adopted by yeah. me? Yeah. I could adopt you. You could? Yeah. Most guys would be scared with all the tattoos and stuff, but yeah. I'm not scared. You sure? Definitely not. Okay, cool. Let's just uh, <laughs> sign the papers later then. We sign the papers, definitely. Yeah. So, what car is this? This is uh, this is a. Do you have any music? 
Yeah, you wanna hear some music? Yeah? Alright. What do you like? Oh, uh, we got a little hip hop on right now. Yeah. Meek Mill. Meek Mills. Meek Mills is a good artist. Can you crank it up? Definitely. You like to hear a little music? Hell yeah. Give it a little bass too, baby. Give it some bass, Mike! Are we allowed to say motherfucker in this Yeah, video? you're allowed to say motherfucker okay. in this video. Well, you're an old b-boy, right? Oh yeah, I used to break dance back in the day. What's your favorite move? Uh, 1990. Which oh. is, 1990 is a spin on your hand in a handstand position. Okay, can you show me that later? Absolutely. Awesome, Especially dude. if we catch a big one. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it right on the boat. Do it right on the boat. Well, actually, I prepared some things here. Okay. And uh, I prepared a quote. Because I heard that according to, to GQ, you are one of the 10 most hated <laughs> athletes in the world, right? You believe that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, and let me quote, we give you America's biggest bass hole. As one <laughs> arrival puts it, I can only a loud brash New Jersey side has disgraced and predominantly Southern roller Christian sport of angling. When he catches one, it says celebrated fisherman Danny Brower, who you also know. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you got you got the fist pumps. You got the running around the boat. The lying flat on the boat. He'll stare at the fish. He yell at the fish. He point at the fish, <laughs> and he'll even shake his finger at the fish. That poor fish. Yeah. What finger is it? Uh, it's usually that finger. Are you right sure? There. Sometimes it's that one, but most of the time it's yeah. that one. Yeah. Okay. What did you think about that? Ah, uh, that's uh, that's an old article. <laughs> I. I think when that article was written, yeah, you know, I was a different character in the sport. But uh, you know, that was that was over ten years ago. I think I think now the sports changed a little bit uh, to the better. I think so. Not as conservative. Yeah, not as conservative. I think people accept more characters and personalities and different people in the sport now, which is great. Yeah. Ice stop. I stop. Very key on a hot day like this. See, you guys fishing too. I stop. You stop. We all stop for ice stop. <laughs> what are we doing? This is an ice stop. This is a beverage stop. It's key first thing in the morning. I actually imagined you being taller. You're like five feet two? Yeah, well normally when I fish I wear heels. So I'm not <laughs> high heels. heels today, you know? You're a high heel man. I just got my flip flops on right there. Yeah. They actually uh, do those uh, with high heels now. Got the ice? The ice. Get a couple drinks. What do you think? Gatorades. Two, Gatorade. two for 222. Two. I will actually do Mountain Dew. That's my fishing soda. Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. You know what? If you are thirsty, you should go fish with Mike because he is buying you beverage. <laughs> awesome. Drinks on me. Drinks on Mike. And we're back in the car. I still can't believe Becky did not tell you. She didn't tell me anything. All right, now I gotta ask you some questions. Yeah, you can do that. Where are you from? I'm guessing somewhere in New Jersey because of your accent. Yeah. Exit five, exit seven yep. on the turnpike? Yep. That's right. Okay. Actually, I was born at exit 77. Exit 77? Yeah, then we wow. moved to exit 74. <laughs> but we ended up at exit 7. Yeah. Exit 7, so okay. You are right. All right. I'm born and raised in New Jersey. Jersey. New Jersey. Jersey, yeah. Hell yeah. The Jersey Shore, baby. Yes. Snooky. Yes, baby. Situation. Yeah, you know the situation, right? But definitely. Awesome. <laughs> Anything else you want to ask me? <laughs> uh, While you're at it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that for right now. <laughs> That's fine with me. So, where are we? We are in uh, Maryland. Yeah. We're headed to uh, a ramp called Smallwood State Park. Okay. It's in a creek that we're going to look at today called Mad Woman Creek. Mad Woman Creek. Mad Woman Creek. Mm -hmm. it's actually I know that. It's mad, it's mad a woman, but I like Mad Woman yeah. better because women are mad. We've all been there, right? <laughs> mad Woman Creek. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is actually a really cool river from a history perspective. Okay. For the United States, you know, there's a lot of old, a lot of old stuff around this river. 
It's funny because old here is like 300 years old. Yeah. Not man. old where you're from. No. 300 years old is not very old, but uh, no. it's a cool river. A lot of the history here is actually stuff that, you know, we fish and we'll look at. You know, a lot of the old uh, rock that they'll quarry out of here. Yep. There's old shipwrecks. A lot of old, really cool old stuff in this river. You got an Italian background. Italian background, yes, on my father's side. Yep. I got to go to Italy last year, which was cool. I work with a company called Mullix, and they're based out of Bologna. Yeah. And I got to visit them last year for about a week and a half. Really cool trip, man. Was it your first time in Italy? It's my first time. Did you feel like going home? Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I didn't get to... Uh, you got the goosebumps? Yeah, a little bit. Next time I go back, I'm going to go back next year, and I'm going to spend another... I'm going to get two full weeks there. Yeah. And I'm going to try to track down some of my uh, relatives there. They're in the Rome area. I didn't get to do it this time, but next time I'm there, I'm going to try to do it. So you're going to call them and... I'm just going to show up like you did this morning. You are. Yeah. yeah. Camera yeah. rolling, knock yeah. on the door. Yeah, you are. Hey! hey! How you doing? Mikey, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? You doing all right? How you doing, Mikey? <laughs> Ciao. Yeah. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. This is Mikey. <laughs> Actually. Who the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Becky tell you? <laughs> You're born in Runnymede? I was born in Philadelphia. Yeah. Lived in Philly until I was six and then grew up in Runnymede, yeah. which is a suburb right across the river from Philadelphia. Suburb of Philadelphia. Okay. On in New Jersey side. Yeah? Yeah. And how was that like? That was good. Good did, childhood. Did you get yeah. beat up? No, I've been in my share of fights. I got yeah. beat up a few times. I, I gave my a fair share of ass whoopings once in a while. You did? Oh yeah. 50-50 at least. Yeah, good. Now, good. dude, like you, I would just, <laughs> I would just run. You yeah. know. You better. Usually the measurement. You know, if I, I <laughs> I'll gauge him. If he's got an inch or two, uh, maybe. But if he's got about three, four inches on me. Fucking run for the hills, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been beaten up by smaller guys. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> no. no, that was a lie. That I really was haven't. actually a lie. I'm sorry to tell you, but I lied to you, Mike. If you're looking for some side work, yeah. I do need a bodyguard. You do? Yeah, when awesome. it's show season, when I'm doing all my sports shows and seminars yeah. in the winter, I need a bodyguard. Just give me a call. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Come over here and whoop some ass. Definitely. Awesome. You gotta wear a really tight shirt down and show your muscles. Awesome. And wear spandex too. I always do. <laughs> <laughs> That's my uh, fetish. <laughs> What's your fetish? Do you have a fetish, Mike? Uh, uh, let's see. I got some weird ones, man. Tell me. Taste some strange ones. You yeah, ready for this? On me. I'm ready for this. Are you guys ready for this? I'll give Do you, you want to hear about Mike Fetish? Give you my top ten list. Number one. Number one. Glass blowing. Mm. Number two. Playing flute. Number three. Growing herbs. Oof, my in my garden. Number four. Rock tumbling. <laughs> Number five. Organic cooking. <laughs> Number six, astronomy. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, astronomy, baby. That's hot. Number seven, xylophone. Say it, xylophone. What the fuck is xylophone? It's an instrument. Okay. Number eight. This is a good one. Yeah. Origami. Origami. Look it up. That's an art of like paper right. stuff. Yeah. Right! So you know origami. Yeah, I know. You know origami. Number nine, collecting cabbage patch dolls. And finally, number ten, this is the best one. I saved the best one for last. Yeah, hit me. <clears throat> Burying dead people in the backyard! <laughs> Woo! God damn, Mike. Yeah. I know, it's a pretty extensive list. It is. Thank you, though. Okay. <laughs> Could you please drop me off here? <laughs> you don't mind all the reels laying on me? Actually, I don't. There's Abu reels everywhere. Abu reels. Laying on all over the place. MGX. Yeah, not the Well used. used. Well used. You got the MGX Extreme somewhere, I think. I have some in the boat. You have? Yeah. 
So you use uh, Abu Garcia reels? Abu Garcia, yeah. And rods? And rods. And rods. What's your favorite rod and reel? Favorite rod? Uh, let's let's uh, break it down. Okay, so I'll give you one for spinning and one for casting. And you could also give me one per, like, say, crankbait. Oh. Uh, you, you can break it down. You want to really get detailed. Okay. No, I want to get detailed. So I use, um, I'm using all the Abu Garcia Ike series rods, the so rods I designed for them. Yep. And uh, so for crankbaits, I actually like a, a parabolic rod. I use a composite rod, which is graphite and glass mixed together. It's real soft. It's real whippy. And uh, we make one that's 7.3. It's a real good all-around cranking rod. Um, on the spinning rod side, you know, there's a lot of them. Um, I make one that's a 7.6. Oh, that's a long rod. Really long spinning rod. It's a great spinning rod. A little different than what, what you can normally find out there. Yep. Uh, and then in the casting rod, um, man, there's a lot of, lot of ones I like, but we make a 7.4 medium heavy. It's a real good all-around rod. Throw a jig, throw a swim bait, a spinner bait. It's a good all-around rod. So they're my, that's, I'll give you my top, they're my top three picks. Cool. And reels? Reels? Uh, for you the crank. The, the new Toro? Yeah, it's a nice reel. I, I keep it pretty simple, man. I use, um, when I'm cranking, I use this one here. I use a Premier yep. in a slower gear ratio, 6-4 to 1. When I'm flipping and frogging, I use an MGX, that faster ratio, it's 7 to 9. And then on the spinning, I um, usually use a 20 or a 30 size Revo. The Premier? Or? Premier. Yeah. Or the MGX. Yeah. Yep, either one. What's your favorite sign? Favorite sign? Have you ever been asked that question before? No. No, that's a good question, right? It is a good question. It is a really good question, Mike. What's your favorite sign? Huh. I want to say uh, my favorite sign is yeah. yield. 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 That's a good word. <laughs> Yield. I've never been asked that before. No. Nah. Ah, it's pretty weird. It is. I like it. Yeah. Yield. 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 Mike told you to yield. Yield. No. <laughs> the first creek we're going to go into after yep. we launch, we're going to we're going to leave Mattawoman Creek. Yep. We're going to hang a left that goes south on the river. And we're going to look at this creek called Chickamauxin Creek. Chickamauxin. Ah, uh, you're kidding no, me. No, I'm not kidding you. That's not even a word. It is a word, Chickamauxin. Chickamauxin. Look it up, it's an Indian word. And here's the other thing. See, we're doing a lot of this looking based on tides. Yeah. So I have this tide app on my phone right here. You can see that. You can see that. There it goes. And you can see there, look at the second line down. And the second line down says... Today, which is Saturday, we had a low tide at 5.39. So we're about two hours after the low tide. So we want to look at a lot of the grass areas first because what happens on a low tide is that grass will actually mat up and you can see the lines. You can see the ditches and the edges visually by looking at the, how the grass lays. And then later in the day, we have a high tide at noon. So as the day goes on, We'll start looking in the backs of the creeks when that water comes up. That way we could get around. We're not going to get stuck. We're not going to hit anything. <laughs> and we could uh, get to the very backs of the creeks and look around some of that stuff. So awesome. that's, a, that's our plan for today. I don't know. This ramp gets a lot of... There's a lot of pressure at this ramp from tournaments. Just about every weekend there's a tournament that goes out of this ramp. And how does that affect the fishing? It it beats them up a little bit, you know? They get, they get a little... Uh, little pounded you know they see the same baits all the time you actually have to strategize that a little bit yeah. but the other thing it does it relocates the fish yeah so you know like this creek we're launching in yeah we're going to spend some time looking here today a lot of what i what we call retreads yeah fish that are brought back at yeah, least yeah, yeah. and you know a lot of times they'll just stay they don't you know they have all their food the food source is there they won't even go back they got their friends and family they got their friends they got the food source they could go to the marina store and get a quick six pack of beer. Yeah, they can. They Paps can Blue Ribbon. Paps! Yeah, Ooh, I love I like, Paps. You like Paps? Yeah, I love Paps. I do too. That's my favorite beer. I'm a big uh, I'm a big fan of Paps, bro. My... I like you. I'm liking you now, bro. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing today? Good, how are you? Good, what do we owe you? 
$12. 12 bucks, okay. Are you up this early? Yeah. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Okay. Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Bye bye. Twelve dollars to go fishing. Oh my god. And I guess you want six from me, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're my guest. I'm your guest. See so okay. now when I come to Sweden to fish with you, yeah. shit better be for free, bro. Yeah, it's for free. Alright. It's all free. <laughs> so we're getting ready to ramp the boat. See you in a while. Okay. Many sims in the road. Words would be rubber if actions were glued. Slightly left of the heightened, frightened children building billions of buildings. Half as new like the slippery distant crystal sea, like the birds on a tree. Their home in the sky is likely to die when I turn the sleigh serene to fry. Oomph and a oomph like a moon of a whale. It shot right up but got caught in our sail. Sailed ever faster towards land with my master plan. Establish some relationship with a one. So actually your pre-practice is pretty much mapping, right? Mapping. Mapping and looking at the bottom contours and looking at the cover. A lot of idling. It's, like I said, this is, when it comes to the sport and, and, you know, people think it's all just fishing and it's glamorous, but this is, this is a lot of hard work. Coming out here and doing this getting this figured out. And you like to do all your mapping while it's tied because you see the I like to clearer. I like to look at the grass areas yeah. on low water. Uh, because with your eyes, yeah. you can start to see stuff. You know, the neat thing about what we're doing out here is this is like really a universal thing. Um, if you're in a bass boat, if you're fishing off the bank, if you're in a kayak, if you're in a belly boat, um, you know, really what we're doing out here in one word is looking for change. And you know, the thing about change, I don't care what species of fish you're fishing for, they're always going to relate to areas of change. And you know, what I mean by that is a place that goes down, a place that rises up, an edge where the weed edge is at, um, where two different water clarities mix, a shade line, I mean, hardly ever do fish just swim out in the open. 90% of the time when I catch a fish, freshwater, saltwater, doesn't matter, he's somewhere where there's change. That's a key word. You know, definitely I'm trying to mark stuff that's out of the ordinary and, and fish relate to that, but you know, we've been gone down to this bank for two miles and this entire shore, there's nothing that sticks out off the bank. Then all of a sudden up here, you've got this one giant tree that lays down. That becomes a focal point, especially on higher water when those fish are gonna be up more. That's, that's a key tree right there. You actually wrote something in your book, uh, for Fishing on the Edge, yeah. about not being born with a talent. What do you mean by that? You know, I mean, I think everybody is, everybody's born with, or they develop in their childhood, you know, a passion and, and a gift for something, man. And, uh, you know, for me, I always think it was fishing. You know, I, I don't know how to explain it, but just always had a knack for it. And it's one thing in life that, man, I just, I'd rather be doing this than anything. Just being out here is, is special for me, man. And today you get a bonus. You get to have me in the boat. Yes. Got a Swede in the boat with me today. And I'm yeah, yeah. about it. The boat's a tool, man. Some guys are worried about, they want a pretty boat, keep it nice and shiny, clean it. Nah, dude, this thing's a tool. This thing's just like a rod or a reel. And, uh, you know, I, I use it hard. I, you know, I always try to get, try to do things the other guys won't do. You know, that's big, that's big for me. I try to get places other guys won't get, you know. 
just always going the extra mile. Sometimes that'll that'll get to get you to the fish that aren't pressured, you know. Some guys are afraid to use their boats. You got to use them, man. So there's your Eurasian milfoil, and it, it's this is soft. It looks like almost looks like feathers if you look at the leaf. And then this is your this is a uh, hydrilla. And it's spiny. This is real hard. You can feel the spines on it, but. This is the lifeblood of these fish, man. This is why this river is so good. And it's good to eat, too. It's like tastes like salad. <laughs> Terrible. So you're born in July? No? And June. June 17. No! I'm born June 17. No. No, just like... Okay. I was gonna say, are you a Gemini like me? Split personality? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually a split personality, but I'm not a Gemini. <laughs> you got four kids? Four kids. You got three girls and a boy. Three girls and a boy. And all how old are they? All good kids. Uh, 17, 15, 5, and 3. 15, 5, and 3. And now you got me, that's 42. Right. Yeah. That's right, I adopted you. Today. Yeah, you did, you yeah. did. Don't forget that. <laughs> Because I'm actually coming home with you. Just call Becky and have her put another plate on the table. What did you climb the Potomac River for right there, baby? That, that made it look easy, didn't it? Think this will get a waypoint? Uh, yeah. Look at that thing, dude. That's a hog. That's a hog. Five of them a day. And a nice you win, baby. Missile mini flip jig, baby. That's that compact jig we were talking about. Look at that. That is a giant. Abu Garcia, Ike Series rod. That's at 7.2, medium heavy. It's a rod I designed for jig fishing, MGX reel. And here's the bait, look at this bait. Pop it out. Little compact missile mini flip jig, black and blue, great dirty water color, and that sapphire blue trailer. You know, the one thing about paying attention to your forage, based on research and fishing here before, a lot of the crawfish in this particular river have a bluish, grayish tint to them. So that bright blue trailer really imitates a crawfish. Excellent. And that's a, that's a good example of what you can catch. Right there, look at that thing. You know, there's, there's six or seven basic styles of casts, but a lot of what I do out there is not even, doesn't even have a descriptive Term. It's not an actual cast. You know, like we were talking about street fishing earlier. Street fishermen a lot make the cast that you have to make to get the bait where it needs to go. And a lot of times what's cool about that is there's no real term for that, you know? It's like it, a mixture of different casts. Yeah, it's casts. like a mixture. It's like part, part skip, part pitch. It's, you know, an overhand long cast, but you got to go over something, so you got to bomb it. I mean, there's so many different variations. Pretty neat, you know, it's it's just like freestyling is what it's like, you know. Social media, man, is, uh, it, it, for me, it's the, one of the biggest tools I could use to help build my brand and help, just help be real, a real person to people. That's, that's important. Um, you know, I think a lot of times people will, they'll make assumptions on somebody and you know, I don't. I want. I want people to see who I really am. That's important. So social media helps me do that. Helps me build my brand. Um, for a pro angler, it's one of the best tools you could use, not only for your brand but for your sponsors. You know, I get to, I get to walk people through my life, and let them see the stuff that I'm using, fishing, non-fishing, and that's a, uh, it's a great sales tool as well. Yo, bro. You gonna yell at me and fucking leave without talking to me like a man?
Talk to me like a man, bro. Talk to me like a man. Look here, man. Look, look. First of all, let me let me tell you something. Hold on, hold on. I apologize. I'm sorry. Talk to me like a man. I'm sorry for doing that. I tried to give you your space. Yeah. I tried to go around you. Yeah, you just ran idle down the whole grass line and throwed all the mud from the grass. When you Bro, took off, you done idle down the I'm whole not grass fishing. Line. I'm idling. I'm not fishing. I'm wherever all the locals are going. No, no, no. I ain't doing that, there. bro. That's how y'all operate. No. We got, I mean, I'm trying to have respect. Listen, I understand that. And listen, I apologize. I'm sorry I disrupted what you were doing. I'm trying not to hurt you guys. It's a Saturday. I get it. Well, buddy, enough for somebody idling right down the grass line. Well, how am I supposed, how am I supposed, line. hold on a second. I understand. What's that called? Listen, I that's totally. That's disrespectful. I know. Listen to me. Shut your engine off for a second. Let me talk to me for a second. I understand where you're coming from, and I get it. I fucking get it. I do. How am I? What I'm doing is marking the grass edges. The yeah, water's right. low. How am I supposed to operate? I got I, three I days to I get understand. as much work done as I can. I'm trying to be. Every time I get to a boat, I loop out and I come back and mark the grass. Uh, line. We're catching the fish right on the edge of the grass. And of course you are. Right down the edge. That's how I'm marking it. How am I supposed to mark where the grass edge is at? Well, don't idle down when somebody's fishing there. It's disrespectful. There are fucking how's your you boats out here, bro? Hundred thousand dollars, and I come idling down in front of your grass. Would you be mad? Yeah, but listen to me. Can you answer that question? I would be mad okay. if you got no, yeah. like right next to me. I was, dude. I was a uh, fifty yards away from you. Eighty yeah, yards 50 away yards from you. Fifty yards Do you think that's not gonna mess the grass up and fish idling through the mud? No, yeah. I'm not fishing. I know you're not. I'm fishing, just but marking you know, stuff. Come on, yeah, man. Not, you know. Guy's fishing by himself. Fun fucking fishing. He's giving me a hard time. This that eardrum pleasure. Lyrical hidden treasure. Little something extra. Better blow him the next up. Hey, so you can say I'm on deck with it. Doing this for years. Pussy rookies come F with it. I'm the face of the youth. I'm the best image. Always got the best weed. Always got the best women. Yeah, but y'all are slaves to reality. Never follow I'm leading. That's why I'm burning my calories. High on sour D. That is my main course. They follow so much that their life is just a fake tour. Do what you love, but love what you do. And honestly, be real to yourself. You know if it's true. If you lie, you probably gon' end with regrets or a life resulting in never and a stress, what you gon' do? Do what you love and love what you do. And honestly, be real to yourself. You know if it's true. If you lie, you probably gon' end with regrets or a life resulting in never and a stress. You've traveled all the way to the United States for me to catch a fish from Sweden. Yeah. Well, Mike, the day is almost over. Almost over? Almost yeah. over. And I actually brought you some stuff from Sweden. You have to, like, rate the most perfect fishing snack, okay? Okay. I can do that. You can do that? I like snacks. You do? Yeah. So I got three snacks here. Okay. Let's start off with Czech's Choklad. Wow. Can you say that? Czech's Choklad. Choklad. Czech's Choklad. Czech's Choklad. I like it. It's, yeah. Is it like a Twix? No. Like a Twix? Like a no, Kit no, no. Kat? No, 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 no. no. This is Czech's Choklad. Czech's Choklad. Okay. Ain't nothing. Else than yeah. six foot long. Looks good. Looks very chocolatey. Looks like a wafer. Yeah, it is a wafer. Oh yeah. Was it good? Reminds me of the version in the States, Kit Kat. Yeah. Very similar. I like it. You do? Yeah, you're not gonna tell me this is like human shit, right? It's human shit. No. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How do they get the smell? How do yeah. they get rid of the smell? <laughs> Alright. I will How do you rate that one? Um, Out of five. I'm gonna give this one a four. A four. I mean, this is good. It's tasty. Yeah. yeah. You can eat it quick. Yeah. Like a lot it. of energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fast energy. Yeah. And then okay. we got, you can put that away. Okay. You can eat it later if you want to. Yeah. Then we got something called Allgren's Bilar. Can you say that? Allgren's Bilar. 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 Allgren's Bilar. 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 Bilar is cars. Okay. This is Sweden's most bought car. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. And just shove them in. Gotcha, hold the whole thing? Ah, yeah, no, you can it. spit that in too. That's a good They're snack. good. They're good, right? Yeah, like gummy. They're gummy candies. Yeah? Yeah. And the taste? Pretty good. Pretty good? I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go three and a half on this three one. Three and a half on those ones. Yeah. 
I like it though. Now, what are they in the shape of? Cars? Yeah. All right. It's a Volvo. Oh, it is a Volvo. Can't you see that? It looks like a Monopoly piece. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And last but not least, my dear friend, we got Jungelvrål. Could you say that? Say that again? Jungelvrål. 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 <laughs> Well, that's actually not at all what I said, Mike. Oh, sorry. I said Jungelvrål. Jungelvrål. No, I said Jungelvrål. Jungen? I fuck shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just taste it. <laughs> all right. We're gonna clean my palate. Yeah, you have to do oh, it. Wait a minute. Yeah. You only got a monkey on the front. Yeah, it's a monkey. Okay. It's a jungle scream. Jungle scream. Okay. Jungelvrål. Jungelvrål. Vrål. 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 Yeah, that's fine. You can roll. This one, you're gonna love this. Jungle one. scream. Yeah. All right, now these are sugary, and no, they're they're not sugary. They're not. No. What is that white? It's not cocaine on there, is it? Yep. Okay. Whoa! Holy! <laughs> no, no, you can't spit it out. Holy <laughs> shit! What was that? <laughs> That's jungle bro. It's hot. It's not hot. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's salty. Just the children love these ones because. When all that salt is gone, you have like the most delicious licorice. Wow. Did you like that? Now I'm actually showing it. It's setting in. Yeah. Dude, the initial shock got yeah. me. Yeah. I thought it was battery acid. Yeah. It but is. But now I'm enjoying it. Wow. Now I get the jungle scream. I get it. The jungle scream. Jungle scream. How do you like them? I like them. I'm going to give this one a three. A three. Yeah. So I think the clear cut winner is the... Um, Jungle frog? No, it's a Czech school cloud. Czech school cloud. Good. Clear winner. Right. And now, yeah. when I get to Sweden, yeah. and you host me over there, yeah. I'll bring some selection of American candy for you. I want some cannolis. 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 You like the cannolis? I, I want, the, want can the cannolis. I want the cannolis. Okay. Cannolis for everybody. So, my dear friends, I've had a really great time today hanging out with the, uh, on the water with Mike Iconelli, one of the most hated athletes <laughs> in, in the world, <laughs> right? After what happened today, I think it might be true. Yeah. So, take care out there and uh, have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye. Did you actually think we were finished there? No, we were just, we were just teasing. <laughs> yeah, we were. I actually brought you a brand new reel. Oh, well, Abu? Abu Garcia. I know Abu. There's only 200 of these made. Wow. Yeah. You're good. No. It's designed by a Swedish guy called Erik Olsson. Wow. And it's... Uh, Open and look at this little beauty. It's for a project called... Ooh. Funny what I Whoa. Look at that. Look at that. Ah, uh, that's a nice reel, right? Look at that. It's based on a 5601. Wow. So cool. Man, this has gone in my... I'm gonna put... You mind if I put this in my studio? The Ike Live studio? Nice. No, I'm cool. gonna display this in the Ike Live studio. Yeah, so cool. Do that. Wow, look at that. Awesome. Thank Eric you, Olson made that one. Thank you. He designed it. Look at that. Awesome. Yep. So cool. And also from Svartsonker, oh. Abu Garcia. It's a Swedish uh, range. Wow. Kind of a hard swim bait with a big tail on the back. Yeah. The swim on this one is awesome. It's slow sinking. You're going to catch some huge bass on that one. Wow. Abu Garcia for life, baby. Abu Garcia for life, baby. It's been a pleasure, bro. My pleasure. Thank you for fishing. We, with we, we just did the, oh, we, the <laughs> awkward number the, two of the day. Number awkward two handshake. awkward. Let's do a third one. Right. Okay. Ah, oh, number three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got it that time. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> She's just 16 years old. Leave her alone, they say. Mike, how do you pronounce lore? Do you say lore? Do you say lure? What do you say? I say lore. Good. I've heard it called lure. I heard it called lo, lo, but I like lore, lore, lore. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you a quick story. Yeah. You might know about this from my book, but I'll tell you the real version. The first lore I ever threw 
yeah. when I was a young kid was a Rapala floating minnow, size nine, color S, which stands for silver, had black back on it. First lure I ever threw, first bass I ever caught came on that lure when I was about 10 or 11 years old. True story. True story. Lore. So your granddad's, right? It was my pops. Yep. From his magical tech box. Yep. I copped it from his box. <laughs> <laughs> awesome.